The death toll of the worst Ebola outbreak in history is now nearing 900, according to the World Health Organization. And as the spread of the disease speeds up, other countries around the world, including Korea, are coming up with measures to keep the virus outside their borders. And today, for more on the Ebola crisis, we're now joined by Dr. Alice Hyung Young Tan from Samsung Medical Center. Good morning. Good morning. So Ebola has a fatality rate of up to 90 percent, and this adds to the threat of the spread. How did Ebola first break out in West Africa, and um, why is it uh, spreading so fast? Well, Ebola is not a new virus. It was first discovered in 1976 near the Ebola River in what is now known as the Democratic Republic of Congo. Um, there have been outbreaks periodically since that time. Mm -hmm. We don't know what the natural host reservoir of this virus is. In other words, where is the virus living when it's not infecting uh, humans mm -hmm. in between these outbreaks? We think it may be a species of rat, or sorry, bat mm -hmm. or monkey. Um, we think what's going on is an infected animal is perhaps biting a human, and that's where uh, the first case occurs. And from that point on, it can spread very quickly through family members, friends, and healthcare workers who are dealing with the infected individual. Mm -hmm. So what are some of the symptoms and how is it transmitted person to person? Well, Ebola is known as Ebola hemorrhagic fever. And hemorrhagic mm -hmm. means either bleeding or causing to bleed. So bleeding either internally or outside the body is one distinctive feature. So is fever. But otherwise, it can look like any other viral illness. In other words, there can be headache, weakness and fatigue, muscle achiness, joint achiness, also sore throat, difficulty swallowing, cough, difficulty breathing, mm -hmm. gastrointestinal symptoms such as nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, um, and also lack of appetite. It spread, as uh, you mentioned, through human-to-human uh, -human contact, through contact of direct um, contact with bodily fluids. Mm -hmm. um, and also, you can get it through contact with contaminated equipment, such as needles or syringes that have been used to treat an infected individual. Right. And we saw reports of two American aid workers who contracted the disease, the disease that are tr being transferred to the U.S. for further treatment. Now, there are more than 160 Korean nationals living in the region, and there are an increasing number of Korean tourists and volunteer workers going to, going to Africa. So is there any possibility of the virus coming into Korea? Well, in this day and age of jet travel, that possibility is real. The, the virus can spread globally quite easily. Mm -hmm. um, and so quarantine measures at portals of entry, such as airports and, and other ports, is very, very important. Um, I think you raise a very uh, important point. All it takes is one infected individual to come into Korea to start spreading uh, the illness quite easily. And so um, people need to be aware of what the symptoms are. And if there is suspicion, then they need to be diagnosed and isolated very quickly. Mm -hmm. And the two missionary uh, American workers who were transferred to the U.S. received the so-called secret serum before they left Liberia. And authorities are saying that their conditions are improving since then. So. Um, could you tell us more about this experimental drug and could this be really effective? Well, so the serum is called ZMAP and what it is is a cocktail of antibodies against the virus. When your body gets infected with a virus, one of the ways that it defends or treats this uh, infection on its own is to create antibodies. And um, these antibodies against Ebola were developed in a laboratory setting and mm -hmm. then made into this medicine, the serum called ZMAP, and given to the individuals in question. These two individuals have since um, improved significantly. So could it be a potential treatment? Yes, definitely it could, um, but it's in very short supply at this point. So what are the current treatment that patients can receive at this point? Unfortunately, the uh, the treatment so far is just what we call supportive measures. So helping uh, maintain oxygen levels, maybe using a ventilator if needed, 
IV fluids to prevent dehydration and collect, correct electrolyte imbalances, um, also nutrition care, and mm -hmm. treating any secondary infections that have occurred as a result of the initial Ebola infection. Mm -hmm. And there have been no reported cases until now of Ebola outside of Africa, but we have to prepare for the worst scenario. Uh, could you give us some tips of how to prevent um, and being infected from the disease? Well, first of all, people should not be traveling to those West African countries um, where it's dangerous. Mm -hmm. um, the mortalities have occurred in Sierra Leone, Liberia, Nigeria, um, and also Guinea. Mm -hmm. So travel uh, restrictions are very important. Also, if there is an infected individual or suspected in infected individual, then isolating that person is very important, making sure not to come in contact with those bodily fluids that might be infected, and also proper handling of any equipment that was used to treat that person, um, either through proper disposal or um, sanitation techniques is also very, very important. All right, Dr. Dan, I'm afraid that's all the time we have for today. Thank you for your time today. You're welcome.